I V M. So it's been another great week on IVM, and we're hoping that you enjoy all of the podcasts that we're being able to get out to you. As always, if you're not following us, please do follow us on IVM Podcasts on all the social media platforms. This week on Keeping It Queer, Naveen spoke to Ankit Das Gupta, the social media content manager at Mirror Now. On Who's Your Mommy, Veda discusses mom bods and the toll a pregnancy can take on women. On Vartha Lab, Akash and Naveen exchange stories with boys from the Bombay Hemp Company. On Pargati, Pawan and Hamsini are joined by Dr. Shambhavi Nayak to discuss the Nipah virus and discuss the nitty-gritties of this new disease. On Simplified, Naren and Chuck break down the differences between schizophrenia and split personality on a shorty. It's been a really, really great week and I hope that you're going to listen to all of these shows or at least some of them. In the meantime, let me get you on to this one. You're listening to Keeping It Queer with Naveen Narona. Hi guys, welcome to Keeping It Queer. My name is Naveen Narona and joining me today is a person I've been wanting to meet for the past 5-6 years now. And uh, they say never meet your heroes, but here we are. Devdutt Patnayak is in the studio with me. Oh my God, somebody <laughs> pinch me, I'm going to die. Hello Devdutt. Hi, hi. How are you? I'm good. So we met recently at the Kashish Film Festival where I was uh, performing and you were in the front row. I, <laughs> I don't see you until I went up on stage by the way and I'm like, shit, I better do my job right. Thank you. So... <laughs> 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 and uh, so what was the experience about uh, the whole Kashish Film Festival if you want to start off with uh, it was nice I mean I, I come to Kashish every year mm-hmm. but I just come for a few segments here and there this time I was relatively free usually I'm traveling all the time mm-hmm. I've taken some time off so I had time and therefore this I think I was the resident celebrity <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> literally every yeah. day I was there so yeah. everybody was very surprised because I'm not usually seen in public functions exactly and um, so this was I didn't realize that I'm not seen in public functions I thought I was very public but uh, it's just that I travel so much mm-hmm. that I realize that I don't spend enough time uh, just, uh, you know, indulging myself, just enjoying films. And this Kashish this year, I mean, I saw great films and I always like films. So Amazing. I'm enjoying that. And uh, for our listeners, if you're living under a rock and don't know who Devdutt Patnayak is, then he's a writer, he's an author, speaker, leadership consultant, uh, most famously known for using mythology as a means to explain the modern dilemma that we live in, in this country. Uh, and he's also applied the same logic to the to the queer community, where yes. we talk about uh, you know understanding the queer culture from the point of my- mythology. And when we look yes. at say we've been screaming about Kajurao and, and temples <laughs> and all the inscriptions and what happened, where did we lose it in the middle? Uh, you've written books about the queer literature, Shikandi and the other queer tales that they don't tell you uh, The Pregnant King and I Am Divine So Are You yeah. a book you co-wrote with Jerry yeah. so I introduced the book and cura- helped uh, Jerry curate it correct so. and Jerry has been on the show before twice Okay. and uh, I did try to tell him ki get Devdutt on the show as well <laughs> but he doesn't listen to me <laughs> he doesn't like me <laughs> so so uh, where did the, the idea first come into being Let, let's just talk about that because uh, when we talk about mythology in India uh, we all learn it irrespective of what our religious background is in, in the in this country we have to like kind of understand the basics of it right yeah i grew up christian but mm. i still know who ram is who sita is who ravan is yes and the mahabharata as well so at what point was the mythology part uh, interesting to you so um you know i used to do this uh, all my life you know i used to like any kid amar chitra katha and all that um i used to be naturally drawn to the mythology section i didn't mm. call it the mythology section it was just the storytelling section yeah it was either philosophy spirituality and all that mm-hmm. But it was um, in my, I, I studied medicine, right? And okay. in the final years, um, I realized that I was drawn to the subject more and more. And it was a hobby, really. Mm-hmm. But sometime, and it's very organic. I can't tell you exactly at this time this happened. And, mm-hmm. you know, God appeared and told me what to do. <laughs> it was nothing of that sort. It's just if that, that some, happened, I would totally believe you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think somewhere along the line, this I started reading so much about it in my free time. I think whenever I would get stressed out, this was my place to go to. Mm-hmm. And that... I realized I knew a lot and my friends started noticing these things that, you know, you know so much about it. They were all ask me these questions from Ramayana Mahabharata. And mm-hmm. then um, one thing led to another and I started writing about this, um, you know, to make some money as a freelance journalist. So I used mm-hmm. to write about it and the editor there noticed mm-hmm. that they that you write a lot. And I think we use words like culture, religion, nobody uses the word mythology. Yeah. And so he asked me to write more and more. And over time, I just realized I write on mythology and it sort of organically happened. It's not something that I... Really, and it's really happened much late in life. It's not like from childhood I was doing this, mm-hmm. but it was around after medical college, so twenty four, twenty five, when I started realizing I started using the word mythology very explicitly Correct. in the columns that I used to write for mm-hmm. many magazines. So, so from there, obviously, uh, you've written so many books based on uh, the Ramayana as well, like My Gita, and then there's. Uh, 
yeah so close to 40 <laughs> books all based on that and that's quite something i mean like first of all writing itself in the country uh, we don't have great writers in this country let me start with that i i really <laughs> i feel like there's a general paucity of good writers and and i'm also someone who went from engineering to like you know going into writing profession and i was looking out for great writers and and my colleague who was my editor back then said why don't you read this guy and that's when i read my geeta okay. and i was like okay it makes so much more sense to have this perspective <laughs> in in practice so did you take time to get to that niche that perspective in general so yeah a mythology is something that i do and you know and my first book was written only because the publisher approached me i mean i never went out looking to write a book mm-hmm. i just met someone who said that you know i don't know anything about shiva can you write about shiva mm-hmm. and because i had a medical background i didn't realize now i realize in hindsight that i put the table of contents very systematically correct how does he look what does he wear what does he do mm-hmm. what are his stories so it was very math very very uh, structured yeah. and they, he liked it and at that time i just thought it was the most natural thing to do mm. but it's not something that um and sure was quite like this adorned guy who used to like have a lot of accessories on so you can just like yeah. write for so it was like a phd thesis on shiva if i could mm. show you the book today which mm-hmm. was written like 20 years ago it's a phd thesis but i didn't know it at that time i thought everybody knew it it's not a big deal <laughs> but no but then i realized that nobody really knows it we claim to know a lot of things but it's yeah. not put together simply and systematically mm-hmm. and when i kept writing book after book and uh, you know at that time nobody i, I thought it would be a best seller <laughs> like hundred copies sold. <laughs> now they're selling, you know, in hindsight and all yeah, that. But now uh, it's a shift which happens with these things. Is that initially I just told this I wanted people to know the stories. Mm-hmm. You know, because I realized that Amar Chitra Katha was not telling me all the stories. That's really my starting point. Yeah, yeah. I started reading the more thick, not the comic books, but beyond the comic books, because I realized there's more stories that were not told to me. Yeah. And then from there I went to theory. Correct. And then I started reading framework, and it became just deeper and deeper and deeper. And I realized mm. like. Really, nobody knows anything. I mean, I was shocked at how little people know. But given that, how many people claim to know everything and about the Vedas and the yeah, yeah, yeah. the Shastra and everything in, in the current time and age? Yeah, the surprised. one thing you can be sure is if anybody tells you confidently yeah. that he knows the scriptures, then you know that he's meeting a liar mm-hmm. because it's an ocean out there. We yeah. don't realize how much literature is there in India. Mm-hmm. It's not just in Sanskrit, but in every language. You know, we we have got this thing that it's all in Sanskrit, and I keep saying no. Ninety mm. percent of India's ideas are not in Sanskrit. They are there in Marathi and Gujarati and Tamil and Odia and mm-hmm. Telugu and Malayalam. And there are saints. Every every state in India has saints, poet saints, and mm. each one of whom would have written a thousand poetry. Yeah, yeah. and you, you can't you can spend an entire lifetime just studying one saint yeah and if you're a land of saints you can imagine how much of literature you're talking about so really there's so much of information out there that we don't know anything and yet these people will say that you know shastro mein kaha hai <laughs> aur vedon mein kaha hai and like nahi kaha hai mm-hmm. and you know they're just projecting their own ideas onto it because also you know we are a country um, as we are eager to believe people in authority yeah. we are eager to believe we are not like sort of yeah yeah i i listen to you but let me make up my own mind we are not that we are like eager to just listen ha ha ye sach hai exactly and that kind of thing so. and similarly it goes out uh, because jerry and i spoke about this about with regards to catholicism mm. where uh, a bible passage says that if a man sleeps with another man mm. as he sleeps with a woman then they both shall be uh, stoned yes and which we mostly are when we are <laughs> stoned <laughs> so so you know the the hilarity of it is like it's open to uh, you know a lot of uh, mm-hmm. interpretations when I mean, when also when they were written in different times yeah, hebrew right? and then there's latin and there's so many uh, different language the the greco latin language also happened in the middle so when we talk about queer issues now let's come to that because that's one thing that people use religion and um, mythology as a main you know tool to uh, shun away the queer people whereas if we watch your videos or if, you, if we listen to your uh, uh, podcast or your recordings mm-hmm. before you've clearly said that uh, religiosity and uh, and mythology in in some way go hand in hand with when it comes to See, queer India people india is one of the few countries where the right from the vedic era so it's you're talking about you know th- 3000 years ago and even the grammar textbooks will always refer to three genders hmm. we never spoke of two genders we always spoke of three genders yeah so there's male gender there's female gender and then there's the other now hmm. there are many words used for it and depending yeah. on who is translating it they'll translate this third gender as neuter hmm. but neuter assumes asexuality 
और बाई सेक्शुअल दैट इज और नॉट दिस नॉट दैट इट्स नॉट मीन एंड द वर्ड यूज अ क्लिबा नपनसका पेदी इन तमिल इज देर इन संस्कृत इज देर इन प्राकृत इज देर इन पाली इट इज देर वी आर द ओनली लैंग्वेज द लास्ट टू एंड थ्री थाउजेंड ईयर्स यू हैव गॉट दिस वॉट इज कॉल्ड तृतीय प्रकृति और द थर्ड जेंडर आई कॉल इट टी पी टी पी फॉर शॉर्ट इट इज लाइक एन अम्ब्रेल इट्स द क्लोजेस्ट वर्ड टू क्वेयर करेक्ट सो लिटरली इंडिया हैज ऑलवेज इन इट्स हिस्ट्री से द इज मेल फीमेल इन क्वेयर Yeah, and in queer they put everything that didn't fit into what is a heteronormative Normative construct. Yeah, yeah. So why would a culture do that? Because you see, we were a culture of what is called rishis, and rishis are basically observers. Mm. They were people who looked into nature. They would stare, 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 and figure out, okay, this is what the world is about. Mm. This is what life is about. This is what animals are about. So Indian scriptures are written in that way. They are written by people who observed nature, and they observed that mm. in nature there are three genders: mm. male, female, and this. they put this basket called the queer hmm. and you find this in the vedas you find this in the brahmanas you find this in the purans you find this in local folklore you say stories songs music everywhere but nobody's yeah. talking about it and i'm like what happened what happened why yeah. are you not seeing what is right there in front yeah. um and uh, you know when you read the purans for hmm. example you will have gods who become goddesses mm-hmm. goddesses who become gods yeah. men who become women women who become men uh gender is very fluid mm. uh love is spoken of in so many different ways mm. um you have all kinds of creatures out there mm. um you have you know apsaras who will seduce a hermit bear a child and walk away just yeah. throw the child they don't want to take care of so they suddenly they, you know we all told all women have maternal feelings no the apsaras didn't yeah or there would be uh you know there is a story for example in the jaiminya brahmana of this man who was just like a serial murderer of women mm-hmm. yavakri this very mm-hmm. strange story mm-hmm. which is very obscure story of course but there are these stories and uh, there are stories of uh, you know two men falling in love with each other um, and not realizing it there are you know as i said gods becoming goddesses goddesses mm-hmm. become gods mm-hmm. so i would always say that why are nobody talking about these stories when somebody says hamari culture mein nahi hai mm-hmm. i said that no they are there it's just that you don't know you know it's like you go se dekho तो गौर से देखो नहीं क्या होता है इट्स अ लाइब्रेरी आउट देयर यू रीड वन बुक एंड यू थिंक यू हैव रीड द एंटायर लाइब्रेरी व्हिच इज व्हाट मोस्ट रिलीजंस आर दे आर लाइक यू हैव रीड दिस वन बुक इट्स कॉल्ड ऑल द आंसर्स आई एम गोना प्रीच माय आइडियोलॉजी बेस्ड ऑन दैट बुक सी इट्स आल्सो मोर देन द रिलीजन यू नो आई एम मोर काइंडर टू रिलीजन देन यू आर यू डोंट वांट टू फॉल इन ट्रबल लाइक आई डू नो इट्स बिकॉज़ आई डू नो द रोल ऑफ रिलीजन इन दिस वर्ल्ड इट्स प्लेस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल फॉर पीपल especially when they're going through a bad patch in life Correct. and things are not working out yeah. you know when no friend is out there no family is out there religion is the only thing that will save you mm-hmm. and how much ever people with you know many people who are very cool about it are usually in privileged positions mm-hmm. kuch nahi hota hai na then you even that rock becomes a god for you because you need that mm-hmm. it gives you an emotional anchor to just rise out and then you know do well in life but i think what happens is these are people who use religion as an instrument mm. and come up with their own crazy theories that god is like this god is like that and they've never read history enough yeah they've not read enough so you know um any religion um you know uh there is so much of information about this religion and religion evolves and changes and transforms over time mm-hmm. and this whole idea that religion is about telling you what to do and what not to do i always tell people that religion is really socialized spirituality mm mm-hmm. but the moment it becomes political spirituality yeah. then it is something else yeah, now problem, yeah. now it's about controlling people and religion is not about controlling people religion is about finding meaning and that's all it is and it's nothing else and of course because people are scared they are looking mm. for an you know people don't want to take responsibility for themselves yeah. so they want a book to tell you how to live your life exactly because i don't take responsibility <laughs> i love my son but will the book allow me to love my son yeah. you know that's the problem so most of these people are scared and um that's what people take advantage of because everybody wants to control people and that's it that's a kick right mm-hmm. uh, to love people so in india let's talk about the you said that we had all the uh, we had purans and the rishis and and all the vedas talking about it so where did we go wrong in the middle you see india has two traditions and mm-hmm. we must understand that it, we have the best way to understand india is to think of butter being churned mm mm-hmm. So whenever you're churning butter or you're making dahi in the house, churning involves. Uh, if you look at this uh, churning stick, what is called a mandira. Yeah. Have you seen this churn- churning yeah. sticks? So to move, your hand has to move in two opposite directions, Correct. right? Correct. Um, which means there's a force and there's a counter force. Yeah. So India is best explained like this. Correct. Really, all cultures are, but mm. specifically to India, mm-hmm. we have a force and a counter force. So there's one force which talks about the body, mm-hmm. and it talks about what is called deha, mm. and there's another force which talks about the spirit. 
about consciousness, about soul. Mm. And so there are two forces. One will say that the body is great, enjoy the body, have fun with the body. Uh, it's very material. Mm-hmm. And the other is like, you know, stay away from the body, keep away from the body, the body will enchant you, seduce yeah. you and all that. And this is which is happening. And what happens is, so one school is talking about the pleasure of the body, the three genders, sexuality, pleasure, calm, shastra. So calm, you know, all the yeah. lovemaking and all the gods and goddesses adorning their bodies, enjoying their bodies and having mm. sex. The mm. other side, you have got a new uh, way of thinking, which is talking about give it all up, this is bad. Now what has happened in the last hundred years, uh, and it's a combination of many things. One of them being, of course, the British, which is the Victorian values coming in, looking down on sex. Mm-hmm. That's one school. But we have always a hermit traditions of these monks, what is called the Mathadhish. Mm-hmm. You know, these saffron robed monks, and especially men who privilege themselves in society on the grounds that they're celibate. Okay. And therefore, they're somehow better than you. Mm-hmm. And they have always had a problem with the Devadasi or mm-hmm. the woman who adorned her body, enjoyed her body, celebrated her body and offered her body as pleasure as part of religion. Okay. So there's always this tension. So now this celibate man sort of aligns with the Victorian and says that, you know what? Hinduism is actually very pure, holy and all these. These are dirty women. <laughs> Throw them out. So basically, pleasure became a bad word. Mm-hmm. The British hated it. They found this because, you know, they came with the Victorian thing. Mm-hmm. And then you have these, the one arm of Hinduism, which is very uh, puritanical, mm. aligning with them. And this became a very powerful force in the 19th century okay. and early 20th century. And they started frowning upon what is called Ayashi, mm. pleasure. Which people write songs about in Bollywood now. Yes. yes. The, in fact, Bollywood is the only place where it survived through songs. Mm-hmm. It was wiped out. The this word. entire culture of pleasure. We Ayashi. were a land of vilasa. In Sanskrit, it's called vilasa. Mm-hmm. So when you read Krishna literature and all that, gods are always in pleasure. They're always having fun. So yeah. they'll always gods will always have these two sides. One side will be very pleasurable, erotic, and sensuous, and almost scary sensuality. Yeah. Goes into tantra and it's really. I've read about Krishna's adventures. Krishna's with, with adventures. The gopis, yeah. Krishna go see it's pleasure it's the yeah. body yeah. So fully aware that it's mortal and everything is coming to an end yeah. so I'm going to enjoy the world have, it's yeah. all there and at the same time they will go to the other extreme then there's Mahabharat happening mm-hmm. so you cannot understand Krishna only through Rasalila you'll also see the Mahabharat where everybody is dying and there's misery and people are fighting over property yeah. and then it says Chhod do. Mm-hmm. and then you walk away from it yeah. so you have these two extreme thoughts constantly it's like Khatta and Mitha mm-hmm. you know two forces fighting with each other that yeah. should I have fun or should I stay, you know, abstinence? Abstinence, yeah. So, and it's like both are important. You can't have mm-hmm. one without the other. One is not better than the other. In fact, one becomes better because of the other. Yeah, yeah. Now, this thinking was there in traditional Indian temples. So, mm-hmm. if you go to the temples, you had the, uh, the the gods, are you know, they enjoy food, they enjoy clothing, they enjoy dancing, they enjoy singing. Um, you know, one of the things that we, we don't understand is that Indian tradition, the, the gods love entertainment mm. you have to sing for them dance for them yeah. they love to dress up they love to go to parties they love to go to festivals but at the same time they I kind of envision them all arriving at the party on their own ruts like, on their own ruts you their, know that's the whole thing like, and the valley is like huh, where do I park the tiger yeah, so, where do I park? so you can imagine that you yeah, know yeah. it's like um, the jewelry is important clothing is important yeah, yeah. they love uh, fine things good clothes good food mm. everything and at the same time they'll say you know it's all maya let mm. it go, let it go, let it go. So when it goes too extreme, mm. they will just suddenly say drop it and move to the other side. Now, nothing matters. Everything matters. Give up everything. Walk away from the world. <laughs> you know, so you have these two almost schizophrenic worldviews because they think only when you move into these two extremes, mm. you'll enjoy life completely. But after the British and in the recent times, mm. this pure, somehow this word, this, the religious lobby has gone into this celibacy is equal to holiness. Mm. And that's this dark. We don't have the balancing fact. The only place where balancing happens, my friend draw me at it, is really Bollywood. That's why Bollywood became so powerful in India. Okay. But not the new Bollywood, not this current Bollywood, where you're not seeing sensuality. You're seeing item numbers. Mm-hmm. Item numbers is exploitative. They yeah. are not sensuous. The woman is not celebrating her desire. It is a man saying, "Ye ladki mere liye item number hai." Ah, it's presenting herself. Luckily, you can yeah. also see some of the men also enjoying the fact that they have to remove their shirts for the women and becoming objects of pleasure, mm. making us all happy in the media. Yeah. So everybody has to be happy. See, pleasure mm. or karma is mm. a very important part of uh, Indian tradition. You cannot have India without rasa, bhava. It's mm. all physical. It's very erotic. It's very sensual. Mm. 
that is very much a part of your life the gods value and validate it and then suddenly of these sudden sanyasis and all most of them are men i've never seen, very rarely i see a woman mm. and these are the people who have given up the world and they are talking in political spaces they're not supposed to mm. it's completely against this is a problem you are supposed to advise the king but you're not supposed to sit on the throne yeah you have to if you're celibate go to the forest go to the monastery mm. but you can't engage because you have to appreciate and you know when you read the shankaracharya story uh, have you heard the shankaracharya story i have and i'm very daft <laughs> so shankaracharya yeah. was one of these great monks of vedanta is one of the most uh, respected sort of re- not a reformers but one who re-energized hinduism mm. about 1200 years ago and um, he was a great st- uh, he became a monk at a very early age because you know he literally uh, his mother didn't want him to become a monk but he became a monk anyway mm-hmm. um and uh, because at that time he was told that i want to study the vedas and the only way i can study the vedas is by becoming a monk so he became mm-hmm. a sanyasi mm-hmm. but when he went through this great competition somewhere in gaya in bihar mm-hmm. he met this gentleman called uh, mandar mishra and there was this great con- um, confrontation and conversation on the truth of vedas blah 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 and he was brilliant he was outstanding mm-hmm. everybody loved him mm-hmm. but the judge of this conference was a lady called ubhaya bharati who happened to be the wife of mandan mishra okay and she looked at him and said you know you're very smart you're very educated you know the vedas but you know it's your knowledge is not complete uh, so i'd like to debate with you on subjects that we have not discussed right now mm-hmm. and i would like to discuss erotica with you kama okay. shastra so mm-hmm. here's a woman the judge mm-hmm. telling that let's discuss sex mm-hmm. and sensuality and body and he says mm-hmm. but you know madam i am a monk mm-hmm. so he says that's not a question the question is if you want to talk of the world and you say that you have knowledge of the world how can you not have knowledge about sex yeah Now, how you get this knowledge? I don't care. You may be a monk, but you need to have this knowledge. Otherwise, your knowledge is not complete, True. and you cannot claim to be the victor of this debate. Mm-hmm. So you can imagine this. Ubhaya Bharati is telling Shankaracharya that you mm-hmm. better get knowledge yeah. of the. And he says, "But I'm a sannyasi. How do I do? Is it that's your problem? Figure it out." Yeah. And of course, then he goes through what is called the kaya pravesh and all kind of magical stories happen. But the bottom line is, he comes back with the knowledge of sexuality, and he writes a book on erotica called Amaru Shataka. Okay. So you have India's greatest monk mm-hmm. called Adi Shankaracharya, who is celibate. and who writes on vedas and vedanta and is highly respected and talks about the body is all maya and you know there's only truth called brahman and mm. he's very famous for this line called uh, jagat mithya brahma satyam that other everything is delusional except the divine mm. you know that is the only truth he's also written a work called amaru shataka which is a 100 verses on erotica on how to make love okay. on pleasure on body on women on men how does that happen you know only in a culture which understands that both are important and what has happened today is we have tilted to one side too one much side, yeah. so corrective mm. measures have to be taken rapidly awesome so we'll uh, take the corrective measures in the meanwhile we'll take a break and we'll hope to uh, twist the balance let's all uh, make love in the meanwhile <laughs> and come back <laughs> we'll take a break uh, keeping it queer i'm here with devdutt patnaik we're having a very interesting conversation we'll be right back long long ago not in bethlehem but in a place nearby there was a wonderful birth of a huge show which i like to call cyrus says the show that encapsulates everything in human history from the first homo sapien to the last homo sapien uh, who's traversed the entire world and then come back to india this is a show which tells you everything about everything if you want to know avoid google come to us it's called cyrus says get new episodes every monday and thursday on the iwm podcast app website or wherever you get your podcast from it's simple as a b oh god what comes up Cyrus says is brought to you by Setu Your Gut. Welcome back to Keeping It Queer. I'm here in conversation with Devdutt Patnaik, the very one. Uh, so before we went to the break, we spoke about uh, the different aspects of divinity. And uh, I was uh, watching Wild Wild Country recently, the mm-hmm. documentary that Netflix made on the entire Osho movement. Yes. Uh, do you think that what whatever Osho was trying to say was like anywhere close to like what we were uh, conversing about earlier? You do know that Osho was homophobic, right? I don't know that. So you know. Um, early in life and you know uh, like most people when you're discovering your sexuality and you're discovering your body mm-hmm. uh, you hear about this strange man who says spirituality and sensuality is the same and osho becomes very famous yeah. so i remember going to pune and going to the osho ashram in the mm-hmm. bookshop over there mm-hmm. and uh, picking up this book on from uh, sanyas se sambhog tak mm-hmm. or sambhog se sanyas tak something of that sort like from from sexuality to spirituality and i read the book and you know their homosexuality is described as a social disease 
is it by this man okay and the moment i said that you know something told me that oh no 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 this man is not as smart as people think they are mm-hmm. you know but everybody is fascinated right because he, every other guru is saying sex is bad yeah. and this guy says sex is good yeah. but you no know, what he means is heterosexuality is good Correct. and orgies is good mm. but homosexuals are not good and then of course when the hiv aids crisis happened you, you had to do an hiv test before you enter the ashram, ashram yeah. and therefore he institutionalized um HIV uh, 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 in discrimination against HIV people. That's, so he institutionalized, um, you know, discrimination against HIV positive people. And I was studying medicine at that time, mm-hmm. and I knew this was wrong. Mm-hmm. You can't do that. That's not. And here is a guru. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, and I sort of that time I was flirting with uh, mythology and figuring out a little bit. I knew enough that this is wrong. This is just rubbish. Mm-hmm. And sort of suddenly you realize, oh, people just assume, he's just like contrarian. Yeah. He's just a contrarian and all contrarians become popular. Mm. So there are all gurus saying sex is bad and uh, you should be celibate Mm -hmm. and that makes you holy. On the other side, you have got uh, these gurus who are talking about sex is good, orgies are good. Naturally, all the West, there's tantra, tantra sex, (laughs) they want tantric sex. All the chakras. And they're going to chakras and all that kind of strange, uh, you know, this kind of uh, exotification of India. And you're liking him. But the fact is, he has not understood sexuality. If he's saying that HIV people have to be discriminated against, Mm. they are not allowed into my ashram. And gay people are have a social disease, and then you realize, you know, um, homophobia is there in amongst all gurus in different forms. They mm-hmm. all smile benignly and all that, but you have these two schools. One school will say the sex is good provided it is heterosexual. Mm. The other guy who says homo- uh, sex is bad, but if you have to have sex, do it for babies. Mm-hmm. And as if women are baby making machines, and you're like, well. Sex is much more than that, and realize they don't understand sex because obviously they're celibate. Never had it. Yeah, they've never had it, or they've not read it. They are not like Adi Shankaracharya read, reading Amaru Shataka mm-hmm. or reading the erotic manuals. They don't know Anangaranga. They have not read any of these scriptures. They've just read like six books on Vedanta and repeating those six phrases, yeah. uh, Mahavakyas, and pretending to know you know very confidently about culture, but really being really uncomfortable with their bodies and really uncomfortable about attraction and. The whole thing. So for me, when I Osho was a disappointment, honestly. At mm. a very early age, I discovered that just because people claim to be modern, yeah, they are not necessarily modern. He says you have to be modern in your head. You know, it's like assuming that a girl wearing Western clothes is modern. No, modernity is in your head. In your it's head. not the clothes you wear. Yeah. You can wear the most traditional outfit and be a very modern person. And what is modernity? The ability to handle differences. Mm. The ability to see things that are very different from you. And being able to enjoy it and appreciate it, and or, mm. or allowing it to exist, Correct. and not trying to control the world in the way that you feel. And he was really controlling, right? HIV ko dur rakho. Mm-hmm. Gay people are social disease. I've recently some of the very famous gurus in India right now also are very nice about oh, homosexuality is good, but it's fluid. You know, straight people can become gay, gay people. Can become gay. I'm like, really? How many straight people go to the doctor and says I want to be gay? Mm. You know, you're really giving false hope to parents and telling them that you know your child can become straight if they come to my ashram and pay me fifty thousand fifty lakh rupees do and sort of problems and do yoga a couple of <laughs> so it's like creating market this business development happening yeah, yeah. and it's a great opportunity and you know there are enough quacks out there the fact is rather than helping people just you know jagat mithya brahma satya you know shankaracharya says everything mm. ultimately is a delusion right yeah. heterosexuality is as much a delusion as homosexuality yeah. so don't give one no privileged position over the other mm. and celibacy is also a delusion but recognize it enjoy it understand it and everybody has different needs and you know nature is so diverse so you should i didn't find gurus talking about that you know what i've learned throughout this conversation that i can make love to somebody passionately and then walk away from them as well <laughs> <laughs> very easy and, and bear the consequences and bear the consequences as yeah. well uh, let's talk about you for a second now we've been discussing uh, so much of uh, spirituality mythology uh, what is devdutt patnaik all about when he's not uh, a speaker or a, or a presenter uh, i'm a workaholic so i don't know why the other day so uh, you know i write all the time and I, i don't think i have much of a personal life you always were in bombay i've been in bombay so i was born up in chembur amar okay. mahal mm-hmm. and then i moved from there to andheri east and then okay. jogeshwari east and now to bandra east nice and which school was this so i was in uh, olps high school what is the full form <laughs> <laughs> this is a question sent specially from jerry is like <laughs> Our lady, so, our lady of perpetual sucker. Sucker means help, guys. Help, 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 in yeah. case you didn't know that. Yes. Uh, but uh, you know, it's one of, in the school. You know, I always tell people that you know, um, I learned Ramayana and Mahabharat in a missionary school. Mm. Everybody has this strange nowadays with this 
ecosystem that we live in and there are these very nasty stories to tell but i said about uh, you know uh, missionary schools and all that mm. i came, uh, went to a, my my principal was father morris cutino mm. and i have had the best education i had in school and i really learned about scriptures and and secularism mm. in my school with from mrs cutino mrs lobo uh, and uh, uh, all kinds of uh, yeah. you know we learned we were very clear there is religion there is uh, there we had moral science yeah so <laughs> <laughs> one thing because in my school we, we i went to convent school so we, they would send all the catholic kids yes. to the church to go and study religion that yes. is a catholic religion uh, and then on the same hand we had the non had that moral science or value education value something. education so you know we we all made fun we was a boy school everybody mm. nobody took seriously any of those things but we learned about other religions mm-hmm. you know we learned about islam you yeah. know every time in we would be told that you know this is hinduism this is christianity this is islam this is sikhism i was exposed to it not that we understood much of it at that time yeah but we were exposed to it it is we were never um, denied exposure to the things mm. and i think yeah, we had uh, teachers from all religions and nobody really it was not a big word yeah. remember there's also the pre hindutva era correct it's this you know it was a very different era we are talking about when people yeah. uh, and we but, lived through that now we can say that we lived through the pre hindutva era yeah i did wow. and you know um, the, because um i'm surprised when people say that i said you know what i remember seeing ramayan plays in olps high school yeah. now what more secularism do you want i mean i remember i and mrs lobo gathering pigeon feathers to do jatayu's wings <laughs> and a friend of mine and working on eklavya the play yeah. or you know um boy school so who's going to play sita yeah. <laughs> and who's going to be ravan who's going to pick him up and be teased and yeah. all about it so you know we had friends uh from all religions we were doing plays we were doing nativity plays so i was yeah. one of the shepherds nice. in uh, one of the uh, productions so and nobody thought about it as religious i was always a cow <laughs> So oh, yes. uh, yeah I remember the shepherd with my mother's petticoat cut into the strange <laughs> outfit yeah, yeah so even so. I would like wear mom's maxis and all and it become like now we are egyptians <laughs> such weird things but i remember like you know my uh, when i when i moved schools from you know from first grade to second grade we were asked where do you want to go do you want to go with the religious kids and hmm. go to the church or who do you believe in the way and i was just like standing at the door of the class and not Sure, like who do I believe and which God do I pray to? I had no idea. Yeah. So I sat for an entire semester with the value education kids, <laughs> and an open house. My mom comes and says, "Why you've been sitting here?" Because I gave value education as an exam, and I'm just like, "Yeah, you can help your olders and all that." And the teacher was Veronica, mm. like she was teaching non-Catholic kids, <laughs> uh, but it was very weird. But I think yeah, that's that's important. The the, yeah. the cross pollination of cultures, it, it in many ways it helps you understand yeah. the the diversity that we have in this country and how to respect the the fact that you know people are from different walks of life. Yeah, see, we don't realize. we are one of the few countries in the world where you know down the road there's a temple down the road there's a darga mm. down the road there's a church yeah. there's a gurdwara out there we take it for granted you won't find this in other parts of the world yeah. you can't go down to you know uh, where you'll find just religious things happening all mm. over the place yeah um and nobody thinks about it as religious it's just that yeah you need it yeah you need to go to god and yeah. the people would say this is a very casual very impersonal way now it's become like this big Terrible. All lines very, have been drawn. Yeah, and now everybody is taking it too seriously. Mm-hmm. You know, it's an important part of life, but don't take it. Don't go overboard with it. Exactly. Calm down. So, uh, what is uh, Keto Dave all about? It's a pet name that you acquired <laughs> in the past few days. Keto Dave. Tell so us. you've been talking to Jerry a lot. I can see. Well, I have more friends than Jerry. What is this? <laughs> no, no, I'm on a pre-diabetic thing. So the doctor just saw my charts and said that you have to lose weight. Mm-hmm. and you have to, so therefore i have to be on a keto diet for a couple of and it turned out to be pretty easy really yeah uh, i didn't expect it to be that um, tough i mean i expected it to be very tough and you know not eat carbs and all that but it's okay once it's, you do it properly once yeah. you do it properly and when you have staff to do it for you you don't have to do anything <laughs> i'm sorry i'm very privileged so <laughs> well uh so you're going your own way aren't you I like my thing. I like it so I'm trying to uh, so the keto th- Dave is the f- joke because I'm not eating half the stuff I'm Very one of those people to. you know those I can't eat this I can't I feel like one of those religious people who says hum aapke haath ka khana nahi kha sakte hum ye nahi kha sakte wo nahi kha sakte you feel very religious when you're doing keto nice <laughs> <laughs> so uh, last question that I want to talk about before we uh, end this what do you see the queer community uh, from now going onwards like where do you see it growing now um see i see that uh, people are becoming more and more confident mm. and uh, i think that's a good thing i think we have to figure out ways in which mental health is becoming a big issue mm-hmm. and many people don't know how to live alone you know they don't know how to be happy alone 
Mm-hmm. Somewhere along the line, we've been told couple dumb is the way to go forward. That unless you're a couple, you'll be miserable. Sab mo maya. And the thing is, this ability to be happy alone and to have many relationships, some physical, some emotional, some mm-hmm. friendly, mm-hmm. some social, uh, some economic. So there are different kinds of relationship. I think this the ability to be single. Mm-hmm. and to celebrate singlehood or to live with friends not necessarily as a couple yeah. but maybe for you know just practical reasons that it's easier to live together four people living together two people living together mm-hmm. i think you have to learn that a bit and i think that's the future because i personally don't believe that i mean some people couple them great good for you but that's not the goal of life mm. it is uh, you know it's not just about being uh, sexually queer but also socially queer yeah. where there are no rules and you figure out your life on your own terms much like the rishis of yore they lived on life on their own terms they traveled they walked away they didn't have homes they just moved away and i think um, the ancient uh, they didn't live masculine lives the rishis yeah. didn't bother about their bodies in that terms they took care of themselves they managed their lives and they lived fulfilled lives mm. uh, and i think um, the only thing the upsaras have been replaced by grinder now so there's <laughs> multiple distractions every 5 minutes isn't it yes and mom's phone calls That's saying true. that shaadi kar lo beta <laughs> तुम्हारी भलाई के लिए तो चलो शादी करते सो टेल अस अबाउट क्वेयर कैरेक्टर्स इन ट्रेडिशनल लिटरेचर इफ यू हैव कम अक्रॉस एनी या सो यू सी अमंग्स द कैरेक्टर्स यू नो यू हैव शिवा इज अर्धन आरेश्वर हु बिकम्स हाफ अ वुमन बट इफ यू गो टू मथुरा एंड मथुरा टेंपल्स व्हेन यू गो टू द शिवा टेंपल्स शिवा इज डेक्ड इन फीमेल अटायर एंड ही इज कॉल्ड गोपेश्वर महादेव Okay. So he's the male god who became female mm. for the to participate in the Ras Leela of Krishna. So it's nice. You know, it's a very uh, so Shiva becomes a woman so that he can enjoy Ras Leela with Krishna because in the Ras Leela only Krishna is allowed to be man. Mm. And then there are stories of Krishna who becomes Mohini. He becomes a female mm. and does many adventures as Mohini, the female form. So he's an avatar called Mohini, which is female. Mm. Um, or in a, at a very queer level, you know, normally gods are supposed to be with goddesses, but you know, a goddess in many temples is only seen with another goddess, mm. who could be a sister, her friend, her companion. So you'll have these Chamunda, Chotila, uh, Nanda, Sunanda, two goddesses mm. worship together as a pair, yeah, yeah. which is an unusual visual to see, right? You'll mm. see normally male and female, but you're mm. using two women together. Mm. And you know, uh, at a queer level, you have these characters. In uh, um, you know, I find this very interesting because, of course, one, one thing you should remember in Greek mythology, when you see of queer, they'll always talk about homosexuality, but in Indian mythology, they will always talk of transgender. Hmm. It's something that we don't realize. Different cultures look at queerness differently. Yeah. So in Indian stories, you don't find homosexuality. You'll find transgender. Yeah. In Greek stories, you'll not find transgender. You'll find homosexuality. homosexuality yeah. And therefore, in the West today, you'll find transgenders facing a lot of opposition. Homosexuality is okay. Hmm. But in India, we have transgenders are okay, but homosexuality people are like, "Nee, nee, our culture me nee hai." Hmm. Because I've never heard stories yeah. like that. But we've spoken about how there used to be dasis in the in the courts as well, and you know. Yeah. So transgenders. So yeah, lots of stories of transgender. Correct. So Shikhandi is a transgender. Shikhandi. In Mahabharat is a female to male transgender. Hmm. Um, then you have got the story of Bhangashwana, who has children, hmm. uh, both as a man and a woman. So he has children who call him father and children who call him mother. Okay. So you know that's like a transparent. It's like Rupal. <laughs> then you have got the story of Mandhata, who is a man who becomes pregnant and bears a child. So hmm. he's a man, but he's also a mother simultaneously. Mm-hmm. So you know these kind of stories you find in the Purans, and this is just like the surface. The rest you read my book. Uh, if <laughs> we surely will. If I'm not wrong, even Arjun. Uh, yeah, Arjun he, take, uh, yeah. again he takes the form of he cross dress. There are many stories of Arjun cross dressing. Okay, then he becomes a eunuch for one year as Brihanala. Mm. Um, so you know he is for one year a hijra. Yeah. And why is it as he become a hijra? Because he refuses to make love to a woman. And so yeah. the uh, Apsara curses him that you know if you think that I'm not good enough for you, then you should not be a you should you don't need your genitals. Mm. So for one year he doesn't have genitals, so he becomes a eunuch. So I just remember that Ramanand Sagar, the Mahabharat that they used to do. The, the Arjun was like, you know, playing the drums very vociferously. Yes, yes. Like, B R Chopra. Yeah, yeah, B R Chopra. Sorry. So like that that memory is quite like instilled in my head. Yes, yes. And so, um, they didn't know how he had learned Kathak. They tried to do make him learn Kathak. Yeah. Kathak. So uh, also as a as a queer writer, like you know, we're reaching out to an audience that's not only queer but also from the walk of life. Uh, how do you connect with them? How do you tell your stories in such a way that they'll also want to read and be a part of the journey? See, um, you know, think of a Venn diagram. There are mm. certain things which are common to everybody, and there are certain things that are different. Mm. So what is common at a human level is that every human being is, you know, um, hungry for something. He mm. wants something. Yeah. And every human being is afraid of something. afraid of losing something so we all want something and we are afraid of losing something 
and if you connect with that part of the human being mm-hmm. and we are all looking for meaning to make sense of our lives mm-hmm. so whether you're queer or non queer everybody like it's like going to a party everybody in the party is frightened mm. that nobody's going to look at me and that's a universal thing in the party so if you understand that everybody in the room is scared then you can make friends more easily yeah. but if you think you're the only person who's scared and nobody's talking to you they're not talking to you because they're scared of you yeah. <laughs> so that will help you engage with people better and i think that's something that you writers keep forgetting they become they become in becoming too queer they forget they're also human Hmm. And I think to connect with other humans, you have to focus on the human part, Correct. and then after connecting with the human part, then you talk about the queer part. That is the unknown. Mm-hmm. So the known part is human, and the unknown part is the queer, and then gradually take people on the journey of the queer world. Nice. The whole world is a dance floor, and everybody is just scared. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Cool. Thank you so much, David, for joining me on this podcast. I really hope that all the people who are listening uh, do get to learn more about what what you're trying to uh, talk about. And uh, if they want to reach you online, where can they talk? They already know your social medias, but like, let's just do it because it's formality. So, so my Twitter handle is at Devdat Myth, mm-hmm. and the email is Devdat at Devdat dot com. Awesome. And I'm at House of Narona on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook as well, Naveen Narona. We'll join you after the small break with the Culture Vulture segment. Bye. Don't go anywhere. The Keeping It Queer podcast will be back with the Culture Vulture segment featuring Farhad right after this break. Hey, what's good, you guys? It's your boy Ranveer Alabadia from the YouTube channel Beer Biceps, and the Beer Biceps team is bringing you Hustle Science. Hustle Science is basically a show where we interview hustlers. We ask them about what made them legendary. We ask them about their success secrets. We go to the core of their legendary status in life. It's going to be hosted by my boy Tejaswin Gumbair and yours truly, Ranveer Alabadia. Make sure you catch Hustle Science on the IVM Podcasting app and website, or any kind of podcasting platform that you use to get your podcasts. Make sure you check it out. The episodes are going to be out every single Tuesday. So that was David Patnaik. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in so far. And now we are here with the Culture Vulture segment on the show, and with me as every day, as Hello. every week, as every. Oof. And don't jo- let them know. <laughs> joining me like every week is Farad Karkaria. Hi. So Farad, did you uh, catch on the latest buzz around Love Simon? Uh, I did. Right. I did, and uh, what should I already give my opinion? Wait, wait, no. <laughs> Look, let's let's lead into it. First of all, what sure. happened is the CBFC said they're not releasing Love Simon, even mm-hmm. though there was a date set on the release. Shit. And uh, one day before the release date, they said we're not releasing the movie. Okay. Uh, did they state a reason why? It's so wait, huh? so first there was a lot of. Uh, you and cry on Twitter and people started like bombarding them with hashtag release Love Simon in India and release Love Simon and that caught the attention of like Queerty mm. and uh, all the other like uh, you know. All the major gay websites got got mm-hmm. a hint of this, and uh, they were sharing this, and Pink News and everything wrote about it. So mm-hmm. eventually, uh, Prashant Joshi, who's the head of the CBFC now, okay. said that the same reason they didn't release Call Me by Your Name is the same reason they're not releasing Love Simon, okay. is that we don't have a substantial audience for homosexual movies in India, which is like <sighs> saying we're not homophobic, we won't release it on the basis of like it's being. That's the really the dumbest thing. Dumbest ever. thing to say, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so as in what movies are based. Release based on if people will watch it or no. If that's the reason, then so many movies don't. Then I think all the best movies will never release. Exactly. (laughs) Literally, like we'll just keep getting shit like Avengers. Don't, don't do that don't, burn okay see Call Me By Your Name also came huh. eventually after the Oscar buzz started around mm. the movie yeah. it's just that it's just, you're saying that you're so money minded you're so obsessed with the fact that we'll make money yeah. out of a movie yeah. Yeah. that will uh, kind of steal the fact that you know a young gay kid could watch the movie and be yeah. inspired by yeah. it yeah. in some way or the other yeah. and I'm glad that there's now a general shift in the tone from mm. where it was like you know what I'm gay and being persecuted to yeah. now being like hey yeah. I'm gay and my life is chill yeah. my parents are chill about yeah. it yeah. and life's better for that yeah. reason you yeah. know yeah. and I think the same reason why Love Simon should be seen by a massive crowd mm. is because if a, if a kid goes with their family irrespective mm. of them being uh, gay mm. or like you know some way they have mental dis- disabilities sure. or they have something sure. lacking in sure. them which they can't open up about sure. this movie encourages that conversation, conversation. so yeah. that's what I need because this guy in, in a movie Simon has a perfect life right yeah. he has a perfect parents he has a perfect yeah. sister yeah. good friends yeah. good school where there's already All a gay it. kid yeah. so so you know like we need to have these movies to be you know yeah. released in India and, and watched by a massive crowd 
I fully agree. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Mm. Uh, but. But. <laughs> but. <laughs> uh, so, uh, okay, here's the deal. First of all, I won't talk too much about the movie because I know it's an adaptation of the book and I've yeah. read the book. I've not seen the movie. Simon uh, versus the Homo Sapien agenda. Uh, yeah. And I cannot tell you how irritated or some parts actually pretty shocked that uh, this was a popular book. Mm. Let's start there because I thought there was some really stupid shit that was said in that book uh, like again I read this like a year ago but I vaguely remember about this comparison first of all I also want to say I remember when I was re- picking up the book the author of this book I forget her name uh, but she's a psychologist let's mm-hmm. start there uh, and secondly there were like ba- like weird assumptions like uh, how it is easier for like uh straight people and lesbians because you know guys like them regardless because they're girls but for gays it is tougher and I just felt like the book was okay but the things that irritated me the most about the book I just felt like it sounded very uh, teenage one tree hill first of all that's not my cup of tea Mm -hmm. Uh, you know I'm always down for like really heavy dark uh, no, I don't want to say dark, but like yeah. real. I'm just on the hunt for real. Whether it's a TV show, movie, book, mm-hmm. I just want real shit. Uh, the use of like some pop culture references. They have a dog named Bieber, and then yeah, yeah. the number of times she says the Tumblr in the book, it used to really fucking irritate me. And all the things that you said, right, which mm-hmm. sort of open up for a conversation. For example. His parents are super open. Uh, his sister's like, hey, very supportive. Again, I don't know if, how it's been adapted in the movie because I hear yeah. great reviews about the so movie. So the movie, uh, what, whatever gripes you had, it managed to omit all of that. There's no okay. philosophical thing okay. on like, you know, lesbians are getting easy okay. attention from the guys okay. or anything. They just they just concentrate on the fact yeah. that uh, this one kid who's gay yeah. at 17 yeah. wants yeah. to have the perfect romance, wants yeah. to go on a yeah. prom date, yeah. but can't find that. You know, yeah. he's just like, he's uh, stuck yeah. in that rut. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, the friends they surrounded himself with also have like weird views on on homosexuality. Yeah. So, for example, they're watching a movie and mm. uh, one of the bachelors in that season, Josh Duhamel, who plays the father, okay. is like that guy's definitely fruity, like he's gay. Mm-hmm. And so this kid feels like fuck, I can't say anything sure. to my father. Yeah, so, yeah. so that feeling is what I really liked in yeah, that movie. Yeah. Uh, so also that there's a confessional thing that they have like on their school website. Mm. Uh, I'm glad that they're not treating it like 13 Reasons Why. Mm-hmm. Again, a similar concept where they're dealing mm-hmm. with an important issue, mm-hmm. but in a high school format, right? Where they're like, let's just grab mm-hmm. a latte and yeah. just go to the best yeah. cafe yeah. and, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. surf on whatever. Yeah. None of that shit is happening. Mm-hmm. They're FaceTiming, they're, they've upgraded now. They're from yeah. Tumblr, they've come to FaceTiming each other. Okay. And talking about more recent okay. updates in terms of uh, what's happening currently in pop culture. Uh-huh. Within two years will be <laughs> null, yeah. I feel. Yeah. 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 But... Uh, the way the structure happens in the story because you want to find out who this mystery pen pal that he has. Yeah. We're, we're looking at the movie through Simon's yeah. character, right? Yeah. And uh, just, the, just the earnestness with which he wants to find that yeah. person because he's yeah. fallen in love with this guy yeah. he does not even know who he is. Yeah, and yeah. like he projects that on every other guy he thinks is cute in the class huh. in his year, right? Yeah, yeah. And so there's like three false alarms for yeah. him until he finally yeah. meets the guy at the end. But again, this is something we discussed in the previous episode. Uh, isn't there a part where he sort of has feelings for also the person who's blackmailing him? Like, is there a part? Again, Not I just really. want to know. I remember in the book, there was one part where he was sort of even into the guy who's blackmailing him. And I just, again, I just, uh, for me, I just felt it was poorly fleshed out characters. Yeah. Uh, they were very saccharine, sweet yeah. and all of that. I don't feel like that happens in real life. If I think about my story or my friend's stories yeah. or whatever, I just feel like it's never that easy. I am all for like things that start a conversation except Dostana and other <laughs> Karan Johar movies. Yeah. Uh, but movie's been debated on this podcast for like so many times now. Jesus. And different people have different opinions. Was there any objection when Dostana was coming out? Not really. No? It was making fun of gays, right? So it's okay. Okay, no, I was wondering like, you know, how it happens with Love, Simon and Call Me by Your Name. I was wondering if back then, I don't remember. I'll have to check with Prasun Joshi what his views <laughs> and get back to it. Yeah. In no, fact, yes. I'll tell you what, I remember, uh, the, uh, not remember, like last week I was just, I was uh, passing by my roommate's room and she was watching something and I was like, oh, so many people talk about 13 reasons, I let me see what this shit is and I literally watched it for 10 minutes and I couldn't stand it. It's not, yeah. And then I realized she's not watching 13 reasons, right? she's watching <laughs> Love, Simon. Yeah, the girl who plays Hannah Baker is there in this movie. I was like, no. And then I was like, why is there so much like hoo-ha about, because I, as far as I remember the book, it wasn't like some raunchy fucking like, you know, gay sex or like none of that, you know, none, none of, that. of that shit no. uh, if a little life was made into a movie I totally get it why it was yeah, banned yeah. and all of that but like I really uh, don't think like uh, 
Yeah, I just remember this it as a yeah, very only one kiss at the end. Teen poppy, uh, which yeah. is not my cup of tea. So I, I have again. two gripes from the movie. As I said, hmm. the, the blackmailing character, uh-huh. that guy's uh, whole whole arc is just like very very bad. Mr. Badly. Blue, Mr. No no, Mr. Blue is the is the pen pal. Oh, the pen pal. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So I don't remember the guy's name, but huh. the guy was blackmailing him. Martin. Martin. Yeah. 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 What an idiot. So he <laughs> he's like a goofball. Who's, even the role that huh. he's got in the movie, huh. the actor and everything is like yeah. the actor set up to fail in this role. Wait, That's, are we giving away spoilers? <laughs> I think yeah, you should just watch it online now because the yeah. Indian censor board won't release it. Okay. So like, catch, catch it online and then come back to this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but spoiler alert from here is that towards the end, when mm. when Martin like he convinces him that if you tell if you tell your friend mm. that I like her and you mm. set us up, then I won't tell anybody that you're gay because I know your email ID and everything, yeah, and I've yeah, and I've yeah, screenshotted yeah, your emails. Yeah. So he's like, okay, he tries to do the whole big proposal at the game day, and the huh. girl says, you know what, we'll just be friends. Yeah. So he feels so insulted. He goes home and anyways pulls the screenshots yeah, out, yeah, yeah, yeah. outing him yeah. without his consent. Yeah. And like basically humiliating him in public, hmm. so that whole reaction to that situation seemed very out of character for me. Huh. I mean, like he did a bad thing and that moved the story forward, but that was not the way. See, I in that it sense, again, I guess I relate to it. I'll give you a little example. When I was in college, uh, my college uh, toilets were gross as hell. So every mm-hmm. time I needed to take a shit, I would go to <laughs> the nearby crossword, <laughs> and uh, I don't know how or what, but uh, someday. Uh, someone wrote in that bathroom that uh, if you're looking for gay sex, and someone put my landline number there. So it was literally, and you the know, crossword in a crossword bathroom. Someone put my landline number, wow. uh, saying uh, "suck dick." I I don't even remember. Uh, no, no, no. It was something to the effect of "will suck gay sex." Call this number. Someone had written it. I have no idea. Actually, when I started getting calls at my house, mm. is uh, once my <laughs> dad picked up the phone. People actually follow up with numbers. No, my dad picked up the phone, and uh, this is when I was not like vocally out, and I definitely don't want my parents finding out about my sexuality through some fucking message in a yeah. crossword bathroom yeah, store. Yeah. So I went after a few. When I found out that these calls have started, my dad was like, "Hey, a lot of random calls have been coming, and they all are saying." that this number is written in a bathroom stall so I went to Crossword and I saw and someone had actually written it there oh, I have sure. no idea who how I don't know how anyone knew that I was going to Crossword to fucking take a shit but someone <laughs> had the pres- did that and I was so terrified man back wow. then because again not because of what was about to happen but it was just the way it was about to happen that this is how my parents are going to find out I'm into dick that someone's put my number there Yeah. Uh, but I was I felt like I immediately turned this around got a, my game up and I I started I told my dad let me answer the phone in that sense my dad was really like uh, perceptive even for then Mm. and I started answering the phone and uh, it was just another gay dude and the thing was he was the one the one who wrote it was constantly calling Wow! so I started Mm. doing this yeah I am gay Uh, where do you stay and I found out he literally stays two minutes away from my house and uh, I confronted him I stood outside his gate Uh, first of all I did not know this is before fucking even Nokia 3310 Mm -hmm. so I just don't know his number nothing I stood outside his gate and literally you know how I recognized him every time someone would come out of the gate I would make sure they would see me and I would know in a second if a person recognized me Mm -hmm. and I literally it happened when this guy walked out he looked at me and he had that face of like oh shit this guy knows and I walked up to him and I was like it was you wasn't it I straight up like confronted him Mm -hmm. he went into a sorry 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 zone because again my dad was sort of in on it so I told him my dad's calling the cops you know I just wanted to know who the fuck you are Mm -hmm. and it immediately stopped after that I did not let it proceed but I just remember how much I shat my pants that time just Mm. because of the kind of calls I had started getting at home and my parents shouldn't be subject to that and no one has the right to out you irrespective exactly so again if it's an outing thing uh, I feel like that wasn't the best way so coming back to Love Simon I felt like that was a terrible thing Uh, in again I remember in the uh, book uh, it's a Tumblr blog where he gets outed and all of that Uh, but uh, yeah it's not it's not a good feeling at all so in that sense I sort of relate to the book I relate to the movie I feel like it's an important message and all Mm -hmm. but I always feel like strong for mature stories like for evolved stories I, mm. I don't know why I keep using the word evolved a lot mm. but I feel like if you really hunt there is 
such real like moonlight right yeah. what makes moonlight such a great fucking movie like there are black people on the down low fucking around but mm. it's a conversation nobody is having you know yeah. and then uh, this is in the ghetto you know so i just feel like movies that bring that out i just love that sort of shit i think we'll see more of that in the near I'm future i'm sure i'm sure in fact like i just feel that when a big production company puts money into love simon yeah. and releases it worldwide and yeah. gets like big actors yeah. who are also famous yeah. because it has the girl who plays anna yeah. baker yeah. is there in this so yeah. Yeah. reasons why yeah. immediately people will watch yeah. it yeah, yeah, yeah. there's also like jennifer garner is there george mm-hmm. Dormel is there mm-hmm. big names involved Nick yeah. robinson yeah. The, the guy yeah. who's playing yeah. the main character yeah. i think he'll always like be yeah. that character who yeah. played uh, yeah. simon in love simon you know yeah if i have to say for me it's like a flaw but I get it it had a very disney sort of approach like yeah. this is a disney movie with a gay yeah, yeah. with a gay guy in the uh, as a protagonist you know what i mean but there's also so a lot of things i like that about apart from that you know like don't focus on the gay thing only which is like the main theme sure. there's like he's also a part of the dramatic thing and then he's fucking his fa- totally. friends happiness up that's yeah. for this whole secret thing yeah. that he's hiding yeah, yeah, yeah. so and there's a dramatic teacher in the, in the movie hmm. who's like sassy as fuck she's yeah, so good yeah. and she steals the show every time she comes yeah. on screen so i don't so know you saw this online you yeah, saw yeah. Okay. there's no other okay. resort because person okay. joshi what the fuck <laughs> there is an audience clearly yeah and uh, if there's an audience for julie i'm mean, <laughs> yeah God. julie 2 as well julie and ragni mms yeah, as well yeah. then there's an audience for it's love just Simon. what a weird country to live in yeah, man. Man. i really don't understand anyway so yeah. if you do get the time and the the internet speed do check out <laughs> love simon online yeah. because that's how you watch shit in india until then <laughs> we're keeping it cool we'll see you next week bye bye As you can see, we have a podcast listener in his natural habitat. Billions of years of evolution have led him to this point. He's on his way to work and listening to podcasts makes his miserable day better. He will now head to work and use all his knowledge to communicate with other colleagues and possibly future mates. You can find more of his species on ivmpodcasts.com. Your one-stop destination where you can check out all the coolest indian podcasts happy listening